Welcome to the Crypto Sphere. This is Cryptogenic coming at you. Today is Monday, February 6th at 7.05 p.m. here in Northern California. In this video today, we're going to talk about the recent jobs report that was released on February 3rd, why the markets are responding negatively to that jobs report, and why that jobs report actually could spell a major crash coming in both the crypto and the stock market within the next five to six months. Uh, so we're going to jump into this uh, into this here, and we're going to take a look at, uh, at at what we're talking about here. First of all, Wharton professor Jeremy Siegel warns the blowout U.S. jobs report may be bad news for stocks and could lead to a recession this year. How could that be? How could it be that a good report about the state of the economy, meaning we created more jobs in January of this year than we did in any month since, I think, 1969. I mean, it's, and the unemployment rate, basically, the report was that, despite all of the raising of interest rates that the Fed did, the economy remains resilient. Why is that bad news for the stock market and the crypto market? Let's take a look. The stellar jobs report on Friday could be bad news for stocks and the economy, Siegel said. The Fed may keep hiking interest rates to keep inflation in check. The Dow Jones will still hit 18%. This is the basic idea. The Fed basically will raise interest rates just shy of breaking the economy. And the sign that the economy is broken is when unemployment begins to skyrocket. So when they see unemployment starting to skyrocket, the Fed is going to go, uh, okay, let's let's stop it right here. We don't want to break unemployment because, in other words, if they push interest rates too far, it's going to make it too expensive for companies to keep employees, which in the long run damages the economy and creates more inflation than raising interest rates can curb, right? So they don't want to break the economy. But Jerome Powell had just said two days earlier, that he only expected about, I mean, he didn't go out and say it, but it was clearly understood by most that there's only going to be probably one more interest rate hike of a quarter percent, and we're expecting that in April, I believe it is. So the market responded very well to that, and I actually expected, I actually made a video expecting Bitcoin to break down uh, after Jerome Powell's announcement, but it did the opposite. The stock market and the crypto market rallied in response to Jerome Powell. But coming over here, taking a look at Bitcoin on February 3rd, this was when the jobs report came out early in the morning. And it's been basically downhill from there, as well as the DJI, right? The stock market. It's, it was looking like it was going to break out bullish, and it just kind of got rejected off of this. So why is the market responding that way? Well, we talked about this in previous videos, and the basic concept is that the more you raise interest rates, the more you increase the value of cash. So really, the economy is driven by two things, cash and assets. And the value of both cash and assets cannot go up simultaneously. If the value of cash increases, the value of assets decrease. And if the value of assets de increase, the value of cash has to decrease. And that's why when you look at, uh, for instance, the DXY, which is the U.S. dollar index, it's in inverse correlation to the stock market and to the crypto market. When the DXY goes down, Bitcoin is simultaneously going up. And when the DXY goes up, Bitcoin is simultaneously going down. And so you cannot have the value of the U.S. dollar increase because think about it. When you talk about the value of Bitcoin, you're not just talking about the value of Bitcoin in a vacuum. You're, calling, you're talking about the value of Bitcoin against the U.S. dollar or in relation to the U.S. dollar, right? So if the value of Bitcoin increases, it increases against the U.S. dollar. But when the value of the U.S. dollar is increasing, it very it just necessarily decreases the value of Bitcoin. And so when the value of the U.S. dollar decreases, it necessarily increases the value of Bitcoin and all other assets on the market as well. So you cannot have the DXY increase while these speculative assets 
decrease or, or increase at the same time. They both can increase at the same time. Now, I have a uh, weekly chart for the DXY. I want to show you this. Here's what I see. And I put this out a few days ago as well. I think the DXY can go on one more rally that takes us into the middle of this year, really probably towards the summertime, like around July. And then it will break down. And that is where, and I, don't quote me on the date, but whenever the U.S. dollar tops out and finishes this whole Elliott wave, that's when the stock stock market and the crypto market are going to bottom. And when the stock market and the crypto market bottom, that's when you're going to really start the new bull run. In That's when the new bull market begins, right at that bottom. Now, something's happening right now on the Bitcoin chart that has never happened before in the history of Bitcoin. It's threatening to happen any day now. Very, very close. And here's what's happening here. What are we looking at? The yellow line is the 200-week moving average. The green line is the 50-week moving average. And what we're looking at is a collision course between the 50-week moving average and the 200-week moving average. And this cross here that looks like it's getting ready to happen, that's called a death cross. That's called a death cross. And it has actually never happened in the history of Bitcoin. We have never had a death cross in the history of Bitcoin. Let's just kind of zoom out a little bit and follow these lines. And what we can see is that the green line, until now, the green line and the yellow line never touch. They got close over here in 2015, but that's as close as it came. They never touched. This is the beginning of the data of the yellow line. And the yellow line and the green line never touch. And this is the Bitcoin index chart. So it goes all the way back to 2009, to the very beginning of Bitcoin, to the birth of Bitcoin. And so that death cross indicates that the bear market is not over. And that this rally, though exciting, is probably temporary and that there's going to be a lot of volatility over the next six months or so until the bottom uh, really comes in. Now, where's the bottom going to be? Now, I talked about this uh, in my other chart here. I set the bottom at 13,326. This chart has not changed. Um, I have a market outlook document that I'll give you for free. Uh, just click the link uh, about the bee dot, about the bee dot com slash for free, and you can get this for free. And I give my whole outlook. I published this in December of last year. And look at this chart. Where do I have the bottom? My chart says uh, 12,956. So, yeah, that's where I see a potential bottom for Bitcoin right around that area and this document provides my whole rationale for that and pretty much what i'm seeing right now especially what happening in the in the macroeconomics and so forth supports my primary thesis and my primary thesis is this number one the big money only buys at the bottom so if you see something that looks like the bottom but there's no big money there it's not the bottom if you want to see what big money looks like this is what big money looks like. See the volume here? Huge volume that was waiting at the bottom. Okay? So that was a bottom. This was not a bottom. There's no money there. So that's number one. But number two, now we're looking at a death cross. Now watch this. We talked a lot about the 200-week moving average and the 300-week moving average. This is the 400-week moving average. I saw this in Benjamin Cohen's video yesterday, and I thought it was so good. You guys should check that video out because he talked about where is the bottom. That was, And he's been on that for quite a while. But he talked about how in the last cycle, 
the 300 week moving average was support. And in the previous cycle, the 200 week moving average was support. And in the cycle before that, the 100 week moving average was support. So if you had 100, and then the next cycle you had 200, then the next cycle you had 300, then the next logical support for this cycle is the 400 week moving average, right? And so his concept was, and he said this in the video yesterday, that if you kind of draw a trend line here, the intersection point is right around here somewhere, somewhere around $14,000. So that's his best guess. Um, and I think that's a very good theory, honestly. But uh, looking at my macro chart here, basically all that would mean is that Bitcoin swipes at this line and gets rejected and then bounces around, and then there's eventually one final flush, and then the new bull run begins, and that starts the new bull run. Now, folks, I know I, I, I know most of us don't like to hear that there could be another flush, that this is not it, that this might not be the bottom. And by the way, it might be the bottom. I could be totally wrong, but I just don't, it just doesn't make sense to me that the big money is going to come in you know, after the market has already increased by, you know, from this bottom, we're already up 47%. It doesn't make any sense to me that the big money is going to buy at a 47% markup, right? It just doesn't make sense to me that if you're the big money, you're going to say, yeah, let's buy it at a 47% markup. No, you're going to want it at a premium. And that means you're going to find a way to crash the market so that you can buy it at the very bottom. That's what I am expecting, and that's what I think um, the charts seem to be playing out now. Um, yeah, so taking a look at where we are right now, the question is, what's going to happen in the short term? And in the short term, um, this is an important question for us in my trading group as well, in the short term, I'm looking at the DXY, the U.S. dollar index, on the daily. And you see this line of support that it's sitting at right now? Let's see. Let's try this again. This line of support that it broke above, if it maintains that support and then bounces from here, if we see this in the next day or two, then what's going to happen is... Bitcoin's just going to break down from here. And where's the support? Support's right here at around. Sorry. Let me just. Sorry, I'm a little discombobulated today. The support's right here at around $21,000. That's about where I would set the support. Somewhere in there. It's probably better to draw a box, like a rectangle. So we can kind of get a feel for like the, the region where support is right now. So if the DXY breaks out like this, then Bitcoin and the stock market are going to break down. And we're looking at Bitcoin right now on the daily is an ascending broadening wedge, which is bearish. Ascending broadening wedges eventually break down bearish, right? So... It would just be kind of following the pattern, not to mention you've got a downtrend in the RSI and it's broken bearish beneath the trend. And, the, and this has happened basically since the jobs report that the RSI broke down. It was just kind of like the market was like, oh man, <laughs> right? So we could be looking at this. However, if in the short term, the DXY instead of breaking out like this, if it breaks down and maybe comes back to this, ish, comes back to a line of support over here, right? If that happens, then what's going to happen is Bitcoin 
is then going to break out and take another swipe at the top of this line. And really what it's doing is taking another swipe at $25,000. And we can kind of see that here on this chart here, that really what will happen is Bitcoin will take another take another swipe at $25,000. Um, and then we'll see, does it get rejected there or does it break through? Whether it gets rejected there or breaks through, I think the rally is going to be short-lived. Um, and honestly, it may be pretty substantial. I mean, we, we might even go up and, and test the 100 week moving average for a while before it finally flushes and breaks down. But I do expect it within the next six months, like between now and the middle of the summer to break down and flush one more time. All right, folks, that's all I got for you today. I'm sorry. I feel like I was tripping over my words and not getting my thoughts out clearly, but hopefully you got something out of this video. If so, would you do me a favor and hit that like button? If you haven't done so, subscribe to this channel. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought. Remember, this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not telling you what to do. I uh, just want to give you some perspectives that may empower and encourage you. Uh, but above everything, make it your aim to sleep in peace every night, wake and joy every morning and walk in love every day. This is Cryptogenic, signing out.